What's going on, everyone? It's Ash on Comics, and uh, let's turn that crap off. Uh, <laughs> that's the Geeky Puppa Show, and this is some boxes. Focus. Focus. Yeah, so I got three boxes. Um, there's my Xbox. If you anyone wants to play Xbox with me, there's my gamer tag right up there. Oh, there's my real name. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, that's my computer. And this is the boxes. And, um, oh, and there's my iPad. And there's my drink. And there you go. Um, yeah. So, um, going to open up some boxes. Three boxes. You know what this one is. But I can't focus. What's going on with my stupid camera? Focus camera. Um, shout out to the Geeky Puppet Show, which is muted right at the moment because this is my show. But um, I'm on their show more than I am on my own show. Uh, but this is an unboxing. I went to the comic book store today, and uh, that's here. I got this in the mail yesterday, I think. I'm losing track of time. And I just got this tonight. Just came home from a Bible study. And um, so that's going to be the opener on this. I've talked about this before. For those of you who've watched me for a while, um, I had an episode a little while back where I was talking about my faith, my religion, and I didn't really want to have my show be a Christian channel or anything like that. My, but, but I was like, I, I believe in God. And um, I do. Um, so tonight was... Um, kind of a profound night. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but um, yeah, today's today is a good day. It's a good Ash Wednesday. Um, and I just want to reflect on it. Um, you probably heard the term, God is love. Um, it gets used kind of like a cliche term. But there's a reason... If you're not a believer, just bear with me. If you are a believer, hopefully you're nodding your head. And if you're not nodding your head, then perhaps we need to talk. But um, it's not just a saying. The idea in the Christian faith that God is love is that he is the embodiment of it. Without him, there can't actually be love. And the morality that we feel as human beings the caring for one another, which is unique to humanity uh, and all the animal kingdom. Um, that love is something that's built into our hearts. And in the Bible, it talks about that God is love and that one of the prime commandments, well, as when Jesus was asked, what is the most important commandment? He answers to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, all your strength. And the second commandment, or the second most important, is to love your brother as you love yourself. His whole entire message, and if you go back through Genesis, if you start in the beginning, the whole message of the Bible is a message about love. And that God is love. And I have struggled many years. I'm about to be, I'm not about to be, I'm going to be 50 this year. And I've gone through a lot of my own struggling and, um, there's my dog and she's struggling through this too. So you're not alone. Um, I, one of the things I've struggled with, with my own belief is, is the organized religion part is about, I see so much hypocrisy in the church and there's so many people that profess, I believe in God, but they don't have a loving heart. Now, a wise Christian will tell you that's because you don't go to worship God because you're a good person. You worship God because you're a broken person and you need him to, to fix you and to save you. And I get that. But at the same time, and I've been guilty of this myself for quite a many years, there's a legalistic sense, this idea of arrogance and so forth. My 
goodness, my dog is bothering me to go out. This is what happens. She needs attention whenever I start talking, do a video. <laughs> Hold on. Mm, thank goodness for pause buttons. Um, where was I? Uh, there's this this problem that's, that's, that I've had facing my my spiritual walk with God and just in my own faith and my own belief of seeing so many, so many believers kind of have this hypocrisy. And I would ask, you know, like, where is the love? And I was going to start this off, by the way. Um, I know some of you that watch are, are believers. This is my ticket stub for the Jesus revolution. Now I am not one to view, um, I'm not one to to usually go view Christian movies. And the reason I, d I don't go is the same reason I hate wokeism in movies and comics and things today is because I don't I don't want to experience escapism in a form of preachiness. And it's true as much as I I believe in God and I'm believe in the Bible and so forth, most Christian media content is very preachy. It's very much in the same style as like the woke stuff that we see in comics today. Um, and I don't like it. It, it. it has nothing to do with it being against my belief. A lot of people might argue and say, oh, you know, you just don't want to see the wokeism in comics because you're a white Trumpist and da, 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 all this stuff. And it's like, no, it has nothing to do with that it disagree or I agree with it. I don't want fiction to tell me how to think. Uh, I like to make up my own mind, um, especially when, it, like I said, it comes to fiction. Now, there's sometimes I do want to watch a documentary or read a nonfiction book that's trying to educate me on a on a particular topic. And in that case, I give, but we're not talking about that. So I, I, I my point is I usually skip. I don't watch many Christian movies at all. And so my church group, um, that I was at a Bible study and I just got home from, they all decided that it, this uh, released two weeks ago, the world premiere or whatever, like they were like, let's all go. And so I was like, uh, okay, well, I'm go because you guys are all going. Like, it'll be cool to go with you guys. But I was like, like kind of just grinning and bearing it going, oh, it's probably going to be real preachy and goofy and, you know, just cheesy. Let me tell you, this is one of the best movies well, it's definitely the best movie I've seen all year, as we're in, um, barely into March. Um, aside from, uh, you know, it's probably not as good as Avatar 2, but this is easily in the best top three movies of last year. Like, <laughs> like this is a really, really good movie. Now, if you're a non-believer, you're probably not going to get as much out of it. But let me tell you, the reason I think this movie is good is because... Yes, it does. It's a movie about it's about real people. It's based on true story, um, but it's it's not a how do I say it? Um, it's not, it's it's not really preachy. It's like a it's a good biopic. It's a good like it's about these characters and their humanity, and you get to see the dark sides. You get to see it doesn't paint everyone as a saint. It just it doesn't. Um, it doesn't paint like the characters like, oh, they believe in God. So look at, they're all just great people. No, they're, they're messed up people and they have problems and they struggle and it's really well done. Um, stars Kelsey Grammer, um, who plays pastor Chuck Smith. Who's a real, real guy. He's the founder of Calvary Chapel. Um, and it's about a, the movement in the seventies, um, the early seventies, late sixties and early seventies. That was called the Jesus revolution in, in Southern California where I'm at. And it happened right before I was born. And I didn't really know about the backstory. Um, I used to attend a Calvary Chapel when I was in Colorado. So I have a little familiarity with like who Chuck Smith was. But um, anyways, it's just a really good movie. And in that movie, there was a scene. And I'm going to spoil. If you, It's not going to spoil the movie, but it's going to spoil the scene. It's not really plot relevant. But it's relevant to what I'm trying to get at. And in that... In the scene, so the pastor Chuck Smith, he's like a stodgy old, you know, 
cliche kind of pasher, very conservative, doesn't like the riffraff. And this was in the 60s with the hippie movement, right? And his daughter is kind of becoming a hippie. And you can see a lot of parallels to today, like with the woke movement and like the whole Gen Z. There's there and they don't how they don't really fit into what their traditionalist side of society is. I see a lot of parallels of the hippie movement and where we're going through today. Anyways, so the daughter has an argument at the beginning of the movie with her, you know, and, and she, he's like, oh, you're going to the hippies and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the typical parents don't understand the kids. Kids don't understand the parents, generational gap type of thing. And she's like, you wouldn't know what to say to a hippie if you saw one, and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, if I had a hippie here, and he says this whole thing. And it, so long story short is she ends up bringing a hippie home one day. Um, and this guy is uh, named Lonnie. Oh, I forgot his name, Lonnie. Anyways, real guy, big part of the whole Jesus movement, anyways, um, and changes Chuck Smith's life, essentially. It ends up, he's, because the hippie turns out to be a believer, ends up becoming part of his church, or whatever, and, and transforming his church, and then launches the whole Calvary movement. Anyways, so at the end of the movie, uh, Chuck is, you know, he's older now, and He's had falling out with characters in the film and different things. And he's not a perfect man. But at the end of the movie, he's just like, he could, he's have, sitting down, he's having dinner with his daughter. And she's, you know, adult. And, and she can see that he's distraught. And she just looks at him and says, Dad, I need to tell you something. I need to tell you that that day when I brought Lonnie home to talk to you, I was on the verge of leaving my faith. I was on the verge of walking away. You know, she's you know typical preacher's daughter type of thing. And I just want to tell you that what you did, and how you opened your mind and your heart and, and all these things and, and how I transformed. So I was having problems. I didn't see the love in Christianity. I, I, was, I was constantly hearing the sermons and the preaching, but... I was like, where's Jesus in all this? Where's the love? And this is something that I have just, it, it hit me like a knife through the heart because I have been through this my whole life. And like going to church and I'm like, yeah, I see a bunch of people that are like, oh, I'm a Christian, I believe and all this stuff, but they talk a good game, but come the end of sermon, they rush home, they leave. You don't hear from them all week until you see them next Sunday. And I was like, where's the love? All these people talking about proclaiming to believe in God and all this, but where is, where is it? And, but her dad, she's like, but you, what you did and how you changed like everything, it, it moved me. It, it reinvigorated me. It, it showed me and it, it just, it got to me. Number one, because I don't have a dad and I wish I did like, and I wish I had that influence, but the power of love, it's not about preaching words to anybody it's not about saying you need to follow these words and everything god is love and that's how we preach to one another and like i'm not a saint um i'm not i don't know where i was really going with this i kind of lost track and all this but this film oh yeah i was doing the whole god is love thing this film is kind of about that it's about trying to find the love of god trying to love one another Trying to find our way in this world that's really good. So if you are actually someone who shares my belief, um, check this film out. Um, it's in theaters still. It's doing rather well. It's a well-made film. Like this is this is Hollywood quality stuff. Good acting, good production, good directing. It's not your typical like Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> no offense to Kevin Sorbo, he's a good guy, but you know you know what I'm talking about if you know what I'm talking about. Anyways. Um, I love the movie. I, I have not stopped thinking about it for past two weeks. And um, hopefully, hopefully you have love in your life. And if you have loved ones in your life, embrace them. Don't take them for granted. And uh, if you say, oh, I'm not taking them, rethink that. I think we all take each other for granted uh, more than we care to admit. So double down on each other. Um, love one another, and um, if you're if you're not a believer, if you have questions about things I believe or whatever, I'm happy to talk. I'm not going to preach to you um, against your will, I should say. But um, I want to make my faith known. 
I do believe in God, and um, I believe God made you, and I believe that makes you my brother or my sister, one of the two. And um, I'm going to get to opening this box. What can it be? It's Ash Wednesday, so you know what it is. Um, oh yeah, I was saying the whole thing that's just started, man, my brain just doesn't work. Is I just experienced a really profound uh, display of love today. And it was from my Bible study group that we meet in a per one person's home who don't, you know, doesn't don't, like they, they open up their home once a week to us and just, I'm not going to go into the details of it. That's not what this channel is really about, but, um, really profound. I've been alive for almost 50 years and I've never experienced, uh, that. So I just want to thank the, thank God for that. Thank God for you guys. Um, as well and uh, no um, I may not know you but I love you as a brother or sister I also love food and I thank God for providing Let's... Mm, sorry for the poor lighting what can we do about the lighting oh yeah if you don't have an in and out burger in your vicinity or if you buy into the online claims that in and out's nothing special. Well, this one's a little smashed because it was in the box with the lid. Um, don't buy into those claims. This burger is $5. It's a double-double cheeseburger, handmade, highest quality ground beef you're probably going to be able to get that's not like ground Kobe or something, just straight-up ground beef. Like in a test, you can actually, they actually run tours of their meatpacking plant in, in L.A. You can go, <laughs> that's how good it is. Um, everything's, fr this is freshly leaf lettuce, everything, the quality here is five bucks. You can't get, dude, I was, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of go, uh, I talk about how good at McDonald's from time to time because it's cheap. You get the app. Oh, it's cheap. Um, double cheeseburgers are up to four twenty nine now. <laughs> like the, the dollar menu, double cheeseburgers now four twenty nine. That's what's happening under, uh. Gavin Newsom and Biden inflation. So I'm going to eat this. I'm going to let my dog in. She's clawing at the door. And uh, then we're going to oh, do some unboxing. That was a good double double. And uh, change brought over a light. So hopefully, I got some better lighting. Also, Forky decided to make an appearance. And there's Stan. And uh, for Marania's benefit, I asked Iron Man to join us. And he. He was gracious enough to uh, <laughs> show up. Oh my goodness. Um, so this is unboxing number two. Um, which unboxing do you think is going to be the best? I think I was doing them in reverse order. I think the first one was probably the least best. As good as that is, um, this is my comics for today. Uh, this is my receipt. I paid 33 bucks, which in my old grandpa eyes, this is too much money for comics <laughs> but some of you are like that's all you paid <laughs> I'm like well you know hey if you got that much disposable income for uh comic books um and this is not one week so i guess i shouldn't feel too bad this is a couple weeks worth of books so you're not going to see just new like wednesday book or today wednesday books these are all obviously all wednesday books so um by the way if you don't have one of these this is really cool um recommend getting one of these Unless you buy a ton of comics every week and they don't fit. But um, this will hold about 10 issues with bags and boards. I don't I don't like having my comics in a bag or whatever. I just bring this box to the shop, which is why you can see it's a little worse for wear. This one has a thing you can slide. I used to have some art you could put in there or whatever. Um, but it's really just to keep my comic books from getting all beat up. And I can just go to the shop, buy my books, slip them here. I don't need a bag. <sighs> And, you know, I can tell all the, the Californians here <laughs> that I'm saving the planet. Um, so, comic number one, Blood Tree. Now, my store didn't order this. I was, I was like, this is an image number one by Peter Tomasi. How are you not ordering this? <laughs> like, it's a number one from Mad Ghost. You know who Mad Ghost? Jeff Johns is an imprint. Um, this has nothing to do with the unnamed stuff, so don't 
it's not related, but it is part of his imprint Maggo. So anyways, I haven't read this yet, but they ordered, uh, they're like, hey, we'll order you some. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So they ordered that. And then I went in today and hey, look, it came out in the same, just in time for blood tree number two. It's pretty wicked. So I haven't read this. Um, Peter Tomasi was supposed to be doing a, um, a superhero book. I don't know what's gone on with that. It was like, it was like this partner team of like a guy and a girl. One was the bullet, one was the gun. I forget what it was called. If you remember what that was, put that in the comments. Um, but blood tree. Okay. I, I'm just picking it up because again, <sighs> sorry about that. Uh, I accidentally touched something I wasn't supposed to touch. One of the things I hate about these modern phones where the screen goes all the way to the edge. There's like no bezel. There's nowhere to like grip the phone. Um, if you just barely touch something, it just sends everything in a tizzy. Anyways, I know I'm a boomer. I was saying all the talent at DC, Scott Snyder, remember him? He was a big rebirth guy. Remember this guy, Peter Tomasi, rebirth Superman? They got rid of all their big talent. And so, yes, I know I'm listening to um, RDV and Zach be like, Jeremy Adams on Flash. It's like, okay, good. He's got a, they got a book. Um, and Josh Williamson's got Superman now. Okay, so he got two books. Ram V on Detective Comics. Okay, he got. There are some good. There is some good talent over there at DC, but as a whole, not so much. Plus, they're playing catch up. This is a relatively new development <laughs> of these people on these books. So. DC is trying to pick up the pieces because they ruined uh, thing. Anyways, all I was saying is all the a lot of the big talents doing the indie books, and even the ones that are at DC, like uh, Josh Williamson, his best stuff is his independent stuff. So if you like his DC stuff, you'll like his indie stuff better. Speaking of indie stuff, here's Good Boy. Um, I haven't read this new series, but I like collecting stuff, and it's cool. It's goofy. Um, that's an ultra violent cover. Yikes. Um, I don't know really more to say about this, but if anyone else is reading Good Boy, let me know. Finally, we covered this on the, um, on the Late Night Comics channel. This is Junkyard Joe numero cinco. And, uh, this is probably the best comic on the stands. Um, sorry. Sorry, Flash fans. I know that you guys rate Flash high because you love Flash, and I don't blame you. Like, if if X Men was if X Men was worthy, like if it was in the top five comics, I would probably say X Men is the best because I'm a huge X Men fan. I say that X Men from the past, like not the not the past two decades, <laughs> the old good X Men. But Junkyard Joe is fantastic. Um, it's part of the unnamed universe thing that uh, Jeff Johns is doing. The first series was called Geiger and uh, this is Junkyard Joe. He's got a bunch of characters. He's putting them together. He's kind of doing what the MCU used to do. Remember when they like launched Iron Man and then we got a Thor movie and then we got a Captain America movie and like they were like hinting about how these guys would eventually come together and then we got an Avengers movie eventually. That's what this feels like. Um, and we've already seen, uh, spoiler alert, Junkyard Joe crosses over in Geiger. Um, but these characters are on a path to meet. And there's a, he, and he hints about this too. There's this thing called the Unknown War. And these characters were all involved in. To what degree, we don't know. But that's part of the mystery. I love the world building. But you don't need to know any of that to enjoy these. Geiger, Junkyard Joe, these are all kind of like, just like Iron Man 1 and Thor 1 and... Captain America, First Avenger, like those you could just come in cold, not know anything, get to know the character. These are even better though. I, this is such a good character story. Jeff Johns just knows how to write about people and relationships and just getting at the heart of the matter. Speaking of the heart of the matter, even though this is not the best comic on stands, this is my favorite comic. If I could only collect, if you said, Ash, you can't buy any comics, you can only buy one, this would be it. I am enamored with this book. Um, if this kid looks silly and stupid, he's supposed to. Um, he's 
This takes place on a fantastical alien world. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. <laughs> so uh, he's supposed to be goofy. He's kind of, um, he's not the protagonist. He's kind of like the, what do you call it? Like the, like short round, you know how in, in Indiana Jones 2, like how short round was to Indy? That's what this guy is like. Uh, he's kind of like the, the catalyst. Anyways, these two guys, Chris Tex and Santos. Chris, Chris Tex is a writer, Santos is the artist. Um, I know it seems kind of cartoony and the art style is kind of cartoony, but don't overlook it. This Santos guy is talented. His layouts and his design is spot on. Um, one of the things that drew me to it was like the design, the sensibilities of this book. They're just something that ring, like it just speaks to me. And I wasn't sure what it was, so I was like, I don't know who these guys are. They're Brazilian. They're friends. Uh, they're from Brazil, obviously, because they're Brazilian. Anyways, um, turns out Chris Tex, and maybe Santos, but Chris Tex, I was, he's a big Hayao Miyazaki fan. And if you don't know who Hayao Miyazaki is, oh, phew, shame on you. Um, you, you go watch Princess Mononoke or Spirited Away or My Neighbor Totoro or, uh, oh, there's so many. Um see see spirit away or princess mononoke first uh, th those are two of the best anyways he's a huge Hayao miyazaki fan i am too <laughs> his you can tell like his sensibilities kind of carry over and i and now that i know that and i read this book i'm like oh i see it i'm not saying he is like Hayao miyazaki he's not but anyways i think we have a shared worldview, I guess. I don't know how else to put it. It's a fun book. Very imaginative. I, I love the art style. Not necessarily the cartoony aspect of it, just uh, the way the pages are laid. Anyway, speaking of uh, imaginative and, and awesome, uh, I'm behind on this. Skip's going to kill me um, because I know he said this is like the best book, even better, he says, than Layla Star. To which I go, I... I struggle to believe. I struggle, Skip. I struggle. But just to be in the conversation, that's pretty amazing. And I'm kind of ashamed that I let this one slip. This is a hard read. Not because it's boring or anything. Because it's very sophisticated. Um, this guy, Dennis Camp, is a writer. Who This book is, is challenging, I guess. Um... And I mean that in a good way. I mean, it's like, it's crunchy. The writing, it's it's not the the nonsense, like the de, uh, the de uh, comp can't think of the word, decompressed, just silly nonsense that we get in so many modern comics today. This, this is a comic with something to say. Um, so I'm very eager to jump back into this. I'm probably going to have to just go back and start from the beginning because it's like I said, it's, it's pretty deep and complex, and uh, I want to be able to follow the story. So Skip said this issue is fantastic. Um, so there you go, uh, 20th Century Men. If you're not getting this, I don't know what to tell you. Finally, last, but certainly not least, this big, thick, bloated beast of 7.99 comic. That's all you need to know right there. No, I'm not going to pretend that Frank Miller is uh, the legend of old. He's not. Um, but, uh, yeah, th look, Frank, Philip Tan's art. These covers don't even do it justice, I don't think. Like, I, I mean, it kind of does. I mean, this is what the page art looks like inside. I mean, it really looks like they just copy the page. The art inside this book... It's like even better than this. Like just, it's just so good. Um, it's so good that even Skip is buying this book and it's $7.99. And he's not even a big Frank Miller guy. He likes to make fun of me, but I'm telling you, go to the comic book store, flip open this book. You, it's, it's eye-poppingly gorgeous. Zach, I'm talking to you. You go and you were saying on the puppet show the other day about how you bought this book and you knew it wasn't good, but you got it because the art, I think it was like 
what's that? The, the Elijah Thoris, I forget her name. Um, whatever. Why are you buying that? You could be buying Frank Miller, Ronan book two. There you go. That's uh, the unboxing. Um, now we're gonna go on to box number two. Oh no, three, three. This is box number two. Box number three. Now, a few days, well, about a week ago. Maybe was it a week ago? I can't. I can't keep track of time anymore. Um, Skip is talking to me because he knows I've been falling in love with this guy, Daniel Warren Johnson. Daniel Warren Johnson, he showed me on the, my Discord channel like months ago this little comic that he did called Old Man Skywalker. And I was like, what, what? Like I'm a big Star Wars fan. In case you don't believe me, this is my wrist rest that I've had that I got when episode one came out. <laughs> this is like a 20 year old wrist rest and it shows, man, it's pretty grody. But you know, Darth Maul is one of my favorite characters. And um, there you go. Um, I'm, it, that doesn't even prove anything. I, Star Wars, Episode four, A New Hope. Before it was even called that, it was just called Star Wars back in 1977. Is the first movie I've seen in theaters. It's one of my favorite. Um, it's my favorite work of fiction, like the Star, the original Star Wars franchise, and, and of all time. Um, anyways, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole. My point is, I was like, Dan Warren John did this whole man, but it's he doesn't have the license to it, so he just did it as like a fan comic, like he, so he can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, oh, so it's like just a thing he did, like a fan film. It's like, so I'm like, you can't get it. Uh, was, but Skip knows people. <laughs> He's got connections out there in Sacktown. Um, and uh, yeah, he managed to find a copy. So he's like, oh, uh, by the way, Daniel Warren Johnson's out here in a little convention. So I'm going to get signed. I was like, what, what? So he's like, you know, how much you want to get one? I was like, what? Are you get I, I don't know. I don't have any money. <laughs> I, can't, I want this thing. He's like, well, just tell me how much you'll pay for it. I'm like, I don't know. So Skip, by the way, that was really stressful. Um, so anyways, we worked that out. Uh, I was like, I could do this. Skip said, pay this. And I was like, uh, okay. And um, so I was like, cool. He's like, cool. I, I PayPal'd him the money. He's like, I'm sending it out. I was like, cool. I expected to get a little Gemini mailer with the comic, that's it. But because, I mean, this goes circle back to the beginning about love and so forth. One thing I was gonna tell you about Skip is, I, I don't know Skip super well, right? I know his first name, I know where he lives. Um, we, we exchange phone numbers, we talk. Um, he's a brother. I don't mean he's a brother because of his skin color, I mean he's a brother because He's got the same father I do up in heaven. Um, and Skip is a generous guy. He's a giving guy. He likes to he likes to give gifts and he likes to do things. And uh, I'm very thankful for that because there's been some lowly points in my life where I'm just dealing with, uh, you know, my own loneliness and depression and different issues that I deal with personally. And then Skip sends a little love package of things and it brightens my day. So I've made videos of unboxings and I've talked to Skip, you know, but I'm thankful. That's why I make these videos because it's my, I, it's my way of at least showing appreciation. So lo and behold, of course, Skip doesn't do things the simple way. He's got to send a big, heavy box. That's, this is things heavy. I don't, I don't know. This feels like 10 pounds easy. Like it's like a brick. Um, so. That being said, I'm going to, I got my little trusty package opening knife. If you can find these, these are great. I got this at like 99 cents in a little plastic jar, 7-Eleven, like 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm like, I want more of these and I can never find them. Um, anyways, I'm gonna rip this open because I can't hold the stupid phone and do this and my stand for my phone broke and you don't care. I'm gonna pause, I'll be right back. Whew, all right, stage one complete. Now we got this box. Now let me show you, man. Let me just tell you, if you ever have Skip get you something, like you send him money, he's like, I, and let me tell you, this might happen, especially if you know him, you're friends with him, because he has connections, he can find things. If you ever 
are like, ah, I don't know, dude, be rest assured this guy will ship it like the most secure, awesome <laughs> like way possible. Um, I believe that's a Gemini mailer inside there. And then it's wrapped in this cardboard sheath, um, which then he had that blue plastic you saw, which was then completely taped that way. If for any reason it got left out in the rain, it would be like, he takes super great care, which by the way, I just want to thank you, Skip, because it's not just your monetary generosity for you to ship things and pay money and do that. The effort you put in that I'm, I don't put that level of effort in and, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So uh, that just that just shows you, you care. So I got to keep going. Um, I got more work to do. All right, stage two complete. Oh, I threw the box. So I was going to show. So now it, it's taped up in a bag. It's got a plastic bag, but then it's all taped. So again, if water got through the perp or the blue layer and through the cardboard through the multiple layers of cardboard. <laughs> it's like, uh, here we go. Um, so now I got to open this. I don't think I'm going to use this because now I'm worried about damaging good stuff. So here we go. All right. Now I have not looked inside this at all um, because I have no idea. I, I know one thing that should be in here is, is the Skywalker book, which I kind of spoiled, but I, I was expecting that. There's obviously more than just that, that little fan book thing so it feels like a hardcover book um i don't know what it is i just want my reaction to be live on um so i don't know how to grab i don't know how to grab this with i need a third hand bag why do i do this oh Oh, look at this. This is a man. Oh, no, no. Tape stuck to the book. Uh, alert. Alert. Hold on. All right. That was a close call. So I, because all the tape on this and skip ceiling, you see there's a little piece of tape here. I just opened it up and left it gaping open. Thought I could slide it, but the tape was exposed and it stuck. And I was like, ah. Anyways, get rid of that undamaged I assure you <laughs> so um, this is awesome um, now I have to readily admit I'm not an ice cream man fan I'm not a not fan I just I've read like one issue I think of ice cream man and I thought it was pretty good but I haven't read enough to be like oh I love ice cream man but I know this is like skips favorite book that's not east of west <laughs> uh, i have to frame on on how i say that um and i've seen this and i'm like oh it's very pretty and i want listen i want to be a fan of this because i see how big of a fan skip is and so i want to love it as much as he does because then i will get to experience that same joy which is why i do these videos not so I could love comics like Skip, but because I want you to love comics the way I love comics. And that's why I'm very opinionated and that's why I push the things that I do because I see something in it. And when someone else doesn't, I don't want to say it bothers me, but I feel like they're missing out. I feel like, oh, oh, you're not, you're not getting what I get. So I want you to experience that same love that I have. And I know that's not always possible because we have different life experiences. We see the world through different lenses. And so art doesn't hit everyone the same way. So even something that can be a brilliant piece of art, if you don't have, if your brain doesn't fire that way, if you don't have the world experiences and things like that, that make that thing work for you, it's not going to work the same for two people. Um, but this is a beautiful book and it's a super, uh, it's really cool to have this and um, skip. Thank you for um, just your loving kindness, man. This is uh, something I I didn't ask for. You didn't have to do. You just did it because that's who you are. And um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, but thank you. 
Now I believe there's more to this, I believe, because I'm expecting, where's the Skywalker book? I believe that it's in here some, oh, there it is. <laughs> he smartly used the book to shield it. So here, look at, oh. Is that painter's tape inside? All right, I trust that painter's tape's not gonna damage the book. Look, and there's Daniel Warren Johnson's signature. There's, there's old man Skywalker. All right, we gotta open this up. All right, I took it completely out of the bag, not gonna risk. I have never seen inside this. Um, again, remember, this is just like a fan book. It's not an official release. Um, oh, just giving you guys a tease of this uh, Daniel Warren Johnson art. Oh, I can't wait to, um, I'm not, I don't want to spoil it for myself or you. Um, so skip. So I, I feel like I paid for this, but I also feel like I didn't pay for this. So I feel like, thank you, skip for subsidizing. Cause I feel like I probably did subsidize this and not actually paid for it. But regardless, um, yeah, you brought some, uh, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I don't, I don't get gifts from many people and I don't want, I always feel like I'm not, um, gr grateful enough, you know, like I got to say a million thank yous to show my appreciation. And I know Skip's not looking for that, but, uh, here's the ice cream man book. Uh, we might have to do some ice cream man in the reading club. Now that might've been Skip's secret motive <laughs> so um it's a good way to hey man if that is your motive that's a clever clever way to uh go about it i i'm not i'm not crying foul um okay i thought i saw something else wet oh there is something else wedged in here what is this oh it's that Kaplan book, Zach Kaplan mindset. Very cool. Uh, I like Zach Kaplan. Uh, interesting story about him. Uh, during the early days of Comicsgate, when all the artists were playing the whole, you got to like do your purity test and you got to disavow comic fans that voted for Trump and all this stuff. I remember having a conversation on Twitter and stuff about just, you know, being professional and, and trying to like argue for a comic skate, not the comic skate that is today, the original concept of comic skate about fans just being like, Hey, we don't want, we just don't want the pro professionals like telling us we're pieces of shit and, uh, to go to hell and stop buying books. Like we just want you to be professional, like just make good books, stop ruining the characters that aren't yours to ruin. Um, just be true to them and, and treat the fans like a professional. You don't have to suck up to us, like just, anyways. So when I talked to him, he was like really responsive. Like he was just like, yeah, I, I kind of understand that. And he was like really cool about it. Like I, I felt like he was, and so I was like, you know what? I really like that you do. So I'm gonna buy your book. Like I went out and I started buying Eclipse and he has that other one called Port, Port of Earth. Um, those are the books he was doing at the time. It was, is it click clips? Not eclipse. It's, uh, oh, dang it. It's a book I read on my channel. It's about the one where the sun just burns everyone. It's not eclipse though. RDV knows what it is. He fell in love with that book. Uh, I'm just drawing a blank on it. Anyways, so that this guy, anyways, that's my little story mindset. I didn't get this. I kind of missed over it, but so now I get to check this out and I have skipped to think. So again, thank you, Skip. I hope you guys enjoyed this boxing. Are you reading Ice Cream Man? Is Ice Cream Man your favorite comic? And if not, why do you fear spiders? This is a creepy, I, I, I don't like spiders. Um, will you maybe read some Ice Cream Man with us? 
All right, this has been a super long one. Thanks for indulging me, Skip. Thanks again for your generosity. Um, to anyone else that's listening, if you made it this far, thank you so much um, for watching my video. And um, if you have anything to say in the comments, please do. Um, and if you have any, you know, I'm, I'm, my door is always open behind the scenes in DMs. If you have questions for me, concerns about me, for me, whatever, man, reach out. Um, I, I know I can be kind of a, a bit of a weirdo sometimes, and sometimes I, I come off as opinionated or harsh, but uh, I'm not actually, I, I don't want anyone to ever think I'm like unapproachable or I don't care about things. Like I do have very strong opinions and I hope I explained why. It really just has to do with people experiencing what I experience and seeing the same value out of it as I do, not to invalidate their own opinions or to make them feel bad or dumb or stupid or, or that I'm better. Believe me, I'm not better than anybody. Um, but so hopefully you're having some joy in your life. Hopefully you have love. If you do have loved ones, love them, man. Um, you don't know how long they're on this earth for and you don't know, you know, just, we, we just, we just need to be there for each other. So, um, Praise God for love and for teaching us about love. And thank you for watching it to the end. And um, light the beam.